Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number three from the International A-Level at Excel, Pure Mathematics P2, January 2023 exam. Now, the three part A here is about binomial expansion. So we have this bracket made up of two terms, binomial, which we have to expand. Okay, it's raised to a certain power, we have to expand it. And we learn about how to expand such powers or such brackets in a, in a way that is a lot easier than actually just writing them all out seven times and then trying to expand. And one of the ways that we can use in um, P2, when we have a positive integer power, which makes life really easy for us, is by using what's called the NCR button on our calculator right, to find the coefficients that we need. So basically, the way, to, the, the way to set this up is to start off by, put, I'm going to write one bracket here for the coefficient, the main coefficient, one bracket here for the first term, and one bracket here for the second term. Okay, and I'm going to use one row per term. So this is for one of the terms. Okay, this is for the first term. Now the first term, because it's raised to the power of 7, I'm going to use the NCR button 7C0. So you write it, it looks like a vector. That's the highest power, and that, that's, you always start with zero. Um, then I'm going to put the next number, which is two, and then I'm going to put the next term, which is kx over eight. Now, they've told us to find the first four terms in ascending powers of x. So the x powers has to start from the lowest and go upwards. So this is going to have a zero as its power, because you start from the lowest one, which is zero, from the bracket that has an x in it. And therefore, the other one has to be the highest power, which is 7. Right, so that's for the first term. I'm going to set it all up, and then I'm going to find out what they are. So the second term is going to, this is going to say 7, 1. So this 7 stays a 7. This one increases by 1 all the time. Now, this bracket, which had the 2 in it before, now this power is going to decrease. And the one that had the x in it, kx over 8, this is now going to increase. The powers of x will be ascending. That's what we're looking for. And then for the next term, which is going to be the third term, it would be 7C2. And this is going to be decreasing still. So that's to the power of 5. And this is going to be increasing. So that's kx over 8 to the power of 2. And then finally, because we only want the first four terms, we could go on if we wanted to, but we only want the first four terms. We can put 7C3. It's going up. And this is 2 to the power of 4, it's going down, and here you've got kx over 8 to the power of, this is increasing, to the power of 3. Okay, so now we can work out what the actual values of each of these are. So, 7c0 is going to give you 1. 2 to the power of 7 is going to be 128. And you've got k, x over 8, all to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to, to 1. So the first term is 128. So we can say that uh, 2 plus 2 plus k, x over 8 to the power of 7 equals 128. That's the first term of the expansion. Plus, now I'm going to get the second term. So I have 7, c1, which is 7. 2 to the power of 6, which is 64 times, and kx over 8 to the power of 1, which is kx over 8. Now, to simplify this, the 8 cancels with the 64, leaving you with 8 up there. 7 times 8 is 56, so you have 56 times kx. So you have 56 times kx, the next term. Then, for the next term, you're going to have 7c2. So I'm going to take the calculator now, and I'm going to work out what 7c2 is. So this is the button here above the division sign that we need to use. But 7, then shift, then this division sign, we're going to, because we press shift, we've activated this function above it, which is C and 2. That's 7C2. That will tell you the main coefficient here, which is 21. So this will be 21 times 2 to the power of 5 is 32 times, now this is all squared. So every term is squared. You're going to have k squared, x squared, and 8 squared, which is 64. 32 and 64, well, that, that's 
goes into it two times. So if we're 21 over 2 times k squared x squared. All right, so that's the next term, 21 over 2. I can write that as 10.5 if I want, but I'll leave it like that. k squared x squared. And then for the fourth term, which is where we have to stop here because they asked us to find the first four terms only. We could go on if we wanted to, but they only want the first four terms. I'm going to have 7c3, so we're going to use the calculator for that again. So I'll put 7c3, which is 35, times 2 to the power 4, which is 16, times... Now this is going to be all cubed, so we have k cubed x cubed over 8 cubed. Okay, so you have 8 cubed, which gives you 512. So this will give you 35 times 16 over 512. So let me put this as a bracket. 35 times 16 over 512. That gives you 35 over 32. 35 over 32 k cubed x cubed. So you put in the end plus 35 over 32 k cubed x cubed. So there is our expansion of this binomial, all right? So that's part A done. Okay, now we're going to go on to part B. Now, if we look at part B, there's our answer from part A there. Okay, if we look at part B, it tells us, let's get this back to normal again, that given that the binomial expansion of f of x, which is, shown over here, okay, or in the binomial expansion of f of x, the coefficients of x, x squared, and x cubed are in, are, sorry, are the first three terms of an arithmetic progression. So it's like an arithmetic series, progression, series, sequence, same kind of idea, right? That means the x term, which is 56k, and the next term, which is 21 over 2k squared, and the next term is just the coefficient of the x squared. The coefficient of the x cubed is 35 over 32 k cubed. 35 over 32, sorry. These three terms are in arithmetic progression. right? So we can link them together. They are the first three terms. So this is the first, second. So we can link them together using... Um, using the fact that the common difference is the same between them. Like if I want to go from here to here, I have to add the same thing as going from there to there. So the difference between these two terms is the same difference as between those two terms, and we can use that inf information to link them together to form an equation. So I know if I take 35 over 32 k cubed, and I subtract from it 21 over 2 k squared, I'm going to get exactly the same answer as 21 over 2k squared take away 56k. That will give me exactly the same difference because they are in arithmetic progression. So if I solve this equation, I have, you know, um, sorted out the question. Now what I can do is I can bring everything on one side. So this is 35 over 32, 32k cubed. Now minus 21 over 2, minus another one, 21 over 2, is going to be basically, you know, um, minus 21, because it's minus 42 over 2, so that's going to be minus 21 k squared, and then I have plus 56 k equals 0. Now, I can see that in each of these terms, there's a common factor of 7. So if I first of all start by dividing by 7 to make life a bit easier, I have... 35 divided by 7, which is 7, so 7 over 32 k cubed, minus 21 over 7, which is 3, that's minus 3 k squared, and 56 k divided by 7, which is plus 8 k, is equal to 0. And then, to get rid of the fraction from here, to make life easier, I can multiply both sides by 32. So this gives me, sorry, this is 35 divided by 7, which gives me 5. What am I doing? Excuse me. That should be a 5 here. Okay. Then I can multiply everything by um, 32. 
right, to get rid of the fraction. So this is going to be 5k cubed minus, now 32 times 3 is 60, sorry, 90 plus 6, which is 96k squared. And then I have plus 8 times 32, 240 plus 16, that's 256k equals 0. Let's make sure of that. 32 times 8. Yep. So now we can take out x as a common factor. So we have x times 5k squared minus 96k plus 256 equals 0. So we can say either k equals 0, but I think it can't equal 0 because if we go back to the original question, it says k is a non-zero constant. Okay, so I can't call k 0. So I can say that this is uh, not a solution. K cannot be zero. Why? Because it is a non, it's non-zero. Okay, the question tells us. So we can't take that as an answer, but I can use this equation here, 5k squared minus 96k plus 256 equals zero. I can use this equation. Now, does this factorize? Well, I'm not going to fluff around and try and find out because it's a bit complicated to to try to factorize this because of I mean it's not a perfect square so it's difficult like that I can't take any common factors you've got to find two numbers multiplied to give you the same as this times that and add it's too much hassle so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the quadratic formula which makes life a lot easier for us so we know that the first term here a the the, the, the one associated with the k squared is 5 and the b which is associated with the k term which isn't squared is minus 96 and the constant is 256. So let's put this in our quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So minus b, which would be minus minus 96, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be minus 96 all squared, minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is 256. All of that over... 2 times 5, 2a. So that should give us our two values of k. So let's put this in our calculator. Um, so this is going to become basically positive 96, because minus and minus is plus, plus, and you're going to have 96 squared. It's going to again be positive because it's, oops, plus the square root of, sorry. Square root of 96 squared, b squared. Let's move over here. Um, and we're going to have um, minus 4 times 5 times 2, 5, 6. All over, and that's 2 times 5. So that gives us 16 as the f one answer. And we can say k equals, I'm going to go back to this and change this to a minus over there. So I have, this will change to a minus. I'll give me the other solution, which is 16 over 5. So those are our two values of k, which satisfy this equation that we formed from the fact that the x, the k, the x, sorry, the x squared and the x cubed terms are all in arithmetic progression. Okay, so that concludes question number three from this um, January 2023 um, pure Mathematics P2 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist, the link for which will appear in this region over here. Other questions from the topic of binomial expansion, which was part A and part B, arithmetic series or just series and sequences will be found in these two playlists. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on the link in the middle. Thank you for watching and see you soon.